Welcome back everyone, I'm Seth Roth, and today we are diving into the Sacrosanct Quest Blue Bloods. This is a fun, almost scavenger hunt style quest that comes with seven additional buffs that can be used to enhance your vampiric playthrough in a number of different ways. Now, the trick with Blue Bloods is you, I think you can run it at any time in your playthrough. Here's the catch. There are 12 people in Skyrim that count as Blue Bloods. These people are so rare, so secure, or so high in the hierarchy of Skyrim that literally feeding off of them will grant you additional power. The trick is there's only 12 of them in Skyrim that you can feed off of. So if I activate the Blue Blood quest marker, for example, you can see there's there's one in Solitude. I've got another one over at the Thalmor Embassy. Uh, it gives you markers to the ones that are actually available in your quest line. Now, the, perk, the, the plus side is that you only need seven of them, right? So you feed on seven and you have the option of 12. So at any time in your playthrough, for example, I'm partly through the Civil War playthrough, so I can't actually feed on Balgruf anymore, the, the initial Jarl of, Dragon, of uh, Whiterun. Uh, he's gone, just plot-wise, in the game. And I've gone too far in the Mage Guild questline that there I, I can't chew on their Archmage because he's dead too. So hopefully there are enough of the other 12 accessible in my current playthrough so that I can get all seven feedings and show you guys all the buffs that come with the Blue Blood questline. I'm going to walk you guys through this because it can be a little tricky depending on who you're going for and what the context is. So let's see, first off, I have accidentally in this playthrough, in this playthrough I was testing out a lot of the Dawn Guard stuff and the Vampire stuff just to make sure that it all worked before I actually ran a demonstration for you guys. But at the same time, I was a vampire, right? So I needed to feed. And I was doing a lot of Thunderchild quests, and I happened to be hungry at the time. And I fed on one of the Blue Bloods by accident. So I'm going to walk you through feeding on him. Uh, if I can find him, you may have guessed it is... Oh, there he is, Argnir. Okay, let's uh, do, 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 do. grab a little quick save. My stealth abilities are still super enhanced from my last playthrough, so this shouldn't be a problem but we save first anyway. I do have a stealth bug going on that literally puts me in front of the person I'm feeding on, so that will not happen in your playthrough unless you have exactly my load order and my exact sneak bug. But as you can see, I got away, fed on him. Uh, when I fed on him the first time, I unlocked a buff called Potence. Vampiric Strength grants 15% more attack damage which increases to 30% more attack damage when sated. So this is a buff that rewards you when you are getting enough feedings. When you're eating regularly as a vampire, your uh, attack damage increases by 30%. And I'm pretty sure that just covers your attack damage, physical attack damage. I don't think that covers your magic damage, like through destruction and that kind of stuff. So that is uh, person number one, uh, probably one of the easiest ones to get because as you can see, they have a very set routine. They don't have a lot of guards and so on and so forth. Now we're gonna hop over to the next uh, runner up. Let's see, Adest Delphine. Well, you know what? I will give you the list first. The, the 12 people that you can feed on in Skyrim. You have the Emperor, Titus Mede, which you can find in the uh, Dark Brotherhood quest line. Uh, Ulfric Stormcloak. Obviously, that's over in Windhelm. We have General Tullius. As you can imagine, that's over in Solitude. Uh, Delphine. Usually, she's down here at Riverwood, but I think I've act tripped. I think I activated enough of the quest that she's actually. I don't think she's, she's returned from Kynesgrove yet. I forget where I am in the quest line here, so I might actually have a hard time. Oh, unless this is her over here. I was trying to figure out... Okay, all right. Yeah, she's still... I had a quest bug over here, so that's where Delphine is. Uh, Savos Arin, so that's my uh, Archmage over here. He's dead because I did too much of the quest and forgot to feed on him, so he's not an option. Codlock Whitemane is a tricky one because obviously he's surrounded by companions. Astrid is another one from the Dark Brotherhood quest line. Mercer Frey is an option. He's down here in the Thieves Guild. Then you have Isron from the Dark Brother or uh, Dawnguard. Uh, 
Argnir, we just uh, fed on him, so that's their High Rothgar. Uh, Ellen Wen is another one. She's over the Thalmor Embassy. She's she's tricky. I'll show you. I had to actually use Sacrosanct abilities just to get to her. And then Linway. I actually forget who Linway is, so that will probably pop up in the comments below. But we're going to grab six more victims so you guys can see what that is all about. We're going to hop over to White Run and take a little nibble of Codlac White Main. Uh, keep in mind, you can't actually drain any of these individuals because they are essential characters. That means you can only feed on them, and therefore you have to feed on them in a way that prevents you from getting caught, because then everyone will try to kill you. You can't just feed them to death and trust that they can't and won't raise the alarm. Now, in Sacrosanct, once you level up as a vampire, you can unlock some abilities the older you get. And if you are going to do this Blue Blood quest in what I call easy mode, there is a Sacrosanct perk that allows you to feed on someone while you are stealthed. So if you're sneaking behind them and you're undetected and you have the option of picking their pockets, through this Sacrosanct buff you can also chew on them. Uh, I would not... If I was doing a fully immersive playthrough, I probably wouldn't do this particular buff because A, it makes it really easy, and B, it doesn't make a lot of sense immersion-wise because I would think the guy he's talking to would notice what's about to happen. Except for my stupid stealth glitch that always decides to plop me right down here. Uh, let's see if we can get away. Okay. All right. Whew. All right. So that unlocked a new ability called Sense Vitae. Let's see if that pops up right. There we go. Okay. Activate a living target while sneaking to learn its attributes and resistances. So this is actually similar to an apocalypse spell that does a similar thing, but we're going to go ahead and give this a shot. There we are. Sense Vitae. That, oh, okay. Wow. 680 health. Nine Magicka. Someone did not care about Magicka when he was going to school. No academic involvement here. 107 stamina. That is less than I anticipated. Uh, frost resistance, obviously, because he's an ord. And there you go. So you chew on two people, and then you can use stealth to figure out the details of whoever you're considering combat with. And you have potence, which boosts your attack damage. So that is Blue Bloods after only two feedings. There are five more to go. And trust me, the last one is definitely worth it. All right, so let's see, who's next? Let's go ahead and grab Delphine, because I figure she's another very easy one in almost, as long as you're, no, I think, I don't think she dies in any of the play, in any of the, in the main quest line. So you should be able to feed on her fairly easily, especially if she's waiting at the uh, Riverwood Inn. She will actually lock into the routine where she sleeps regularly. And when she's sleeping, obviously, that's another easy way to, you know, feed. So, in this, but in our case, we're just going to uh, do the sneak feed because it's easier. And I'm trying to do a demonstration that just shows you guys the perks of feeding on these particular topic targets. And then you guys can decide how easy or hard you want to make the task. All right, Eyes of the Moon. Let's have a look at that. This is feeding number three. Where are we at here? Eyes of the Moon. All right, your vampire seduction power can now affect targets up to level 50, up to 50 levels higher. So if we go down to our vampire seduction power, which is already pretty high because I boost a lot of my uh, illusion magic. Whoo, silently bewitches a person up to level 99 for 44 seconds, calming them and allowing you to feed. So vampire seduction, by, so by the third feeding of blue blood, as long as you can get somewhat alone, and they're not a ridiculously high level, I think Argnir, for example, is 150, so you're not going to be seducing him. Uh, given that he's super old, that might not actually vi be viable for him anymore at his age, who knows. Anyway, so that's a nice little perk. It gives you a vampire seduction, gives you a once per day means of feeding reliably as a vampire, which... Uh, if you're doing a build where you have to be at full power in order to, or at, have to be fully sated, fully filled, in order to unlock your best abilities, then that obviously is worth is worth it. If you're doing a build where you want to leverage more of the starving abilities of a vampire, then obviously that is another matter entirely. 
And okay, so you know what? Let's go ahead and do the Thalmor Embassy next. Let's see, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to be sneaky sneaky. I might actually have to wait till nightfall to make this work, because there are a few more guards in the Thalmor Embassy than there are elsewhere. Let's see here. So Alright, step one. We are going to need to activate a different power. There we go. Nightwalk. We're definitely going to need Nightwalk. And then if we're dealing with these guys... Eh, we, yeah, there we should be okay. We should be able to do this without getting into a whole lot of combat. You just have to uh, go in under the cover of darkness with lots of stealth. And to be clear, if you want to come in here and brute force it and kill all the guards and then go into the building, I think that still works. Uh, I just like the added perk of trying to sneak your way in. If I can just get through a pesky little lock. It is. I have heard that there are some mods that increase your jump height and you can actually increase your jump to the point where walls are no longer an issue. But I do like the immersion of still needing to, to be sneaky. If I can just find my way into this lock. You'd think with 38 lock picking, it's this thing's only an adept. Why is it taking me so long? Come on. Come on. It's gonna be okay. You just need to open up for daddy. I'm, I'm not even gonna kill anybody, ideally. I'm just gonna nibble on your boss. Alright, let's see. So I know I saw one person over here. I have maxed out this guy's stealth, so we might actually be. Oh, no. Alright, well, we're gonna wait for the NPCs to get into position. Come on. This is one of the more challenging ones because they have such a structured guard routine. Maybe I can just slip in. There we go. All right, so the trick here, we actually have to get over around this wall if we can. Which means getting around one other guard over here. Do, 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 do. I think we might be able to. Yeah, I'm making this look easy because this character has 100 stealth. And I know it will not be this easy for you guys, but if the embassy is too challenging, there are other options that you can use. Now, there is a little, I don't know if it's by design of the Bethesda people or just happenstance, but you can't quite get up enough health, enough height to get over this wall. Apparently there's a guard right there, so let's uh, just give him a second to... <laughs> Ignore the jumping person! I just need to know when your back is turned, if you would be so kind. Let's to turn your back. Yes, yes, almost there. Okay, and all right, so as you can see, my character, like I'm right on the tip here, but I just can't quite get over the edge. This is what you use, Nightwalk. There we go, so we're in ghost in uh, shadow form. We'll just uh, do, 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 I think the range on this is 100 feet. And you can actually do this, notice it did not break stealth. I'm still in stealth and I teleported. I love that power really makes you feel like a creature of the night if you get my drift. I don't know why. Okay, so my quest marker means she could be in either of the two buildings. Uh, this is, we're going for Ellen Wynn. She's the head of the Thalmor Embassy. And the Thalmors being spies and thieves, obviously she's one of the ideal targets. So, she should be asleep in bed. And if you want to try a blue blood, a blue blood playthrough, that is far more difficult, I highly recommend only feeding on people while they sleep. Don't get the sacrosanct buff that allows you to sneak on people when you're stealthed. Just, uh, yeah, you have to be very careful if you force yourself to wait until they're sleeping. That can be very tricky, especially the generals. They have a lot more guards and a lot more people keep an eye on them. But in our case, oh, it's not, you're not Ellen Wynn. You shall suffer. <laughs> All right, we're going to try another room real quick. I know she's got to be around here somewhere. I thought there was another room over here. Yes, there's a room, but it's not a bed. So where is Ellen Wynn? Let's see. Let's uh, give it another hour to wait, just in case she needs to, in case the NPC needs to reload that's not her. Hmm. I forget at what point I am right now in this playthrough in the Civil War quest line. Although the quest markers seem to be insistent that she's either here or in the other uh, guards' quarters. But we're going to slip through here just to be sure. 
Huh, I wonder if she's in the front room. Either of these doors unlocked? Nope, that one requires a key. That's the kitchen. Okay, let's try the other, because I remember that the top floor of the guard's room in this next building, if she had like an office space, that might be where she actually sleeps, in which case we just need to make a little hop, skip, and a jump over here. You know what? While in vampire mode, why not make the most of it? Come on, there we go. Let me just, oh jeez. <laughs> wow, that's a, that's a way to guard a door. All right, we're gonna see if we can, uh, all right, we stay in stealth right behind this guard. I just have to get close enough to activate the door. Aha, someone fell asleep on the job against an open opening door without falling over. Little immersion breaking, not gonna, not gonna ask too many questions though because this quest is already frustrating enough when you're trying to find people to feed on. Okay, so we've got an empty bed. I wish it would tell you who owned the bed, so at least I would know if that was Ellen Wynn's bed, and then I would be able to recognize whether she was on her way here or not. Give it another hour. I, I've done this once before, and it took a minute for her character to spawn in and actually go to bed. So we're going to switch into first person mode just to make this a little easier to navigate because I might have to might have to go downstairs and then back upstairs just to get the right things to reset. Maybe? I don't know. Let's see. If I can't find Ellen one, then we'll go on to the next one. She is one of the trickier ones. I don't know why it would give me a quest art marker down here, but we might as well find out. Hello? Anybody home? Uh, I guess that one is just to give you a way out of the Thalmor Embassy, as if you, I, as if that would be the sanest way to get out of the Thalmor Embassy is through the underground tunnel. But that definitely cannot be where Ellenwyn is. I mean, this Ellenwyn's Solar, so she has to be here, unless I've already tripped something in the Civil War quest line that puts her somewhere else, in which case we'll hit Solitude next. Ooh, I heard a door open. I don't see anyone, though. Hmm. Yeah, we'll hit Solitude next and see if she's skulking around General Tullius, maybe. I don't know the exact placement of every NPC at the various stages in the Civil War quest line, so that might be something to consider. Anyway, so keep in mind, Ellen Wynn is one of the harder ones to find simply because her NPC moves around a lot. I thought she would be here at home, but apparently... She is not. Never fear, there are other people we can eat. I'm trying to remember, because I did, I remember I had this problem before where I went through, I tried a couple different buildings. Oh, jeez. Apparently 100 stealth will only get you so far. This was not my intention. I just wanted to eat on your, eat your boss. I wasn't going to kill her, just, you know, a little bit of dietary supplements. I mean, I guess, oh, actually... I mean, technically, I do. I, I did uh, unlock another one that allows me to feed on people that are stunned. So technically, if I find Ellen one and then attack her, that would also suffice. But we're gonna try and not do that because it's not exactly the sneaky sneak. Oh, oh wait. Ah. Yeah. Oh wait. Oh, haha! -ha! There she is. Wait. <laughs> She's sleeping under the corpse. I mean, I guess that's a pretty good hiding place if you're worried about people. Okay, so, all right, let's get this done. All right, so we're gonna feed on Ellen one real quick. There we go. Okay, so we now have Tooth and Claw. Now, the way Tooth and Claw works, let's have a look, see. Man, I have a long list of buffs. It's almost like I've been playing this character for an unhealthily long amount of time. Tooth and Claw. All right. Your attacks deal 25% more damage to targets affected by a hemomancy spell, such as Bloodseed. Now, that's a really interesting one. So if you're doing an off a one-handed build that also uses uh, blood magic, this would then be very helpful because your one-handed attacks do more damage when a target is hit with Bloodseed, which is... a 
a blood magic spell that makes them more vulnerable to other blood magic spells. So that actually works out really good. All right, so that's feeding number four. So for those of you that are trying to keep track, Ellen Wen is in the main building, not her solar. But you might have to leave an exit once for the computer to, you know, spawn her in at her facility. Just keep that in mind. So I had to leave and come back in before she spawned in, and then everything was fine. Now, hopefully, if I'm still in stealth mode... Okay, good. All right, we can get out. Not a problem. All right, who are we going to eat next? Uh, let's see. Yeah, we we'll, might as well take him out next. Let's go pay, pay a visit to the general. This one is really, really hard if you're not doing sneak feeding. Sneak feeding is an amazing way to make blue bloods a lot easier. If you actually, if you insist on waiting until they are sleeping before you feed on them, then it gets so much more challenging. This general in particular, I don't think he actually sleeps in his daily routine. I don't think he actually goes and sleeps, given that it is four in the morning and he's still here. So we're going to save first, da, 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 don't mind me. Sir, we can't just keep trading blows with the rebels like this. It's only strengthening their results. There we go. So, whoa, okay, well, all right, this may happen. Uh, keep in mind that in order to get all of the blue bloods of Skyrim, they, they might take issue with giving unwilling blood donations. Oh, geez, let's just... Uh, move on. I don't mind painting off a bounty later. This is all for the for the demonstration anyway. That's just uh... Alright, you guys think you can keep up with me? You guys think you can keep up with me? Actually, this will work. Let's just do a little bit of evasive running real quick, and... Goodbye! Alright, off to Windhelm we go. <laughs> Good luck hide hunting someone that teleports. All right, let me see. So that put us on the next buff. That was feeding number five, which is myth, mystery, mythersia, mythersia, if that's how you pronounce it. Now, mythersia gives you, oh, days pass 20% faster, nights pass 30% lower. So this actually affects the clock in the Skyrim world. You are literally spend more time at night than you will in the day because night lasts longer and days fast pass, pass faster. So if you're doing a long vampire playthrough, uh, you'll, it, will be, it won't be dark 50% of the time, it will be dark maybe 75% of the time, I'm guessing. Uh, but that's kind of a cool, I don't know how they would do that lore-wise, because technically you're affecting the entire lunar cycle, unless your character just gets faster during the night and slower during the day. I don't know, but that's a fun one. That brings us to... Feeding number six. If I can find my way around this town, that teleport stealth bell drops you in the weirdest part of uh, Windhelm. Here we go. Okay, I've got my bearings now. So our next uh, leveling blood donor, if you can guess, happens to be. Keep your distance. Okay. Goodbye. Disrespect the law, you disrespect. The I'm not gonna disrespect anyone. I'm just gonna get a blood donation. Involuntary. But also unknowing. The unknowing part, you know, that, that helps. Alright, let me see if it is still night time. Okay. Alright, so if you want to go after the Civil War generals, if you decide they're one of the ones you want to feed on for Blue Bloods, you need to start the Civil War quest line. I think once you get through the battle for Whiterun... There we go. Bon appetit! Once you get through the battle for Whiterun, they start doing their daily routines, right? So if you just walk into Windhelm for your first time, and it's 11 at night, uh, uh, Ulfric will just be sitting there on his throne talking like normal. Whereas if you go in after you've started the, uh, the Civil War quest line and you've gotten Whiterun has either joined the Stormcloaks or the Imperials, then they he'll be in his routine and you can feed on him while he's sleeping. Otherwise, you'll have to do sneak feeding like I've been showing you in the past. So just uh, keep that in mind. And that was feeding number six, which gives us the buff Masquerade. You are no longer hated and feared when blood starved. This is very important. If you're going to be doing a 
Blood Starved playthrough because it does give you some cool powers. When, when, you're, when you are so thirsty for blood that you are blood starved, your Vampiric Drain does four times as much damage, right? And you get that Flay Wind ability where vamps, vampires literally track something down and just suck the life out of them. I think it's like 300 damage in like 10 seconds. It's pretty cool. But this would be vital for that because without this buff, if you are ever blood starved, NPCs will immediately recognize you as a homicidal vampire and they will find you and try to kill you. So this is very important for a vampire playthrough. Also, if you have a hard time keeping track of your feedings, you know, if you get lost in a big dungeon and you come out of black reach and you're blood starved and you don't realize it, so you fast travel to town and suddenly everyone's trying to kill you, this will prevent that. So at the least, those six, that sixth feeding is really helpful if you have a hard time managing your uh, your feedings as a vampire. Uh, yeah, so that's a good one. And then last but not least, let's see, who is going to be lucky donor number seven? Uh, perfect, daylight. Just what every vampire needs. All right, so I think I actually, yes, I started the Dark Brotherhood quest line just to make sure I would have an extra person to feed on just in case. Astrid shall be our final donor. There we go. Alrighty, I forgot that I, I thought that door was going to give me a riddle, but that's the further down in the Dawn Guard or the uh, Dark Brotherhood quest line. All right, Astrid, I'm going to need you to hold very still and not turn towards me just for a moment. I should probably say it first. I'm afraid I don't have a primary oh. contract for a I mean, they already have a vampire in their ranks, so maybe this isn't considered strange or treacherous. <laughs> I guess not. Okay, cool. All right, now, buff number seven. This is the, the reason the reason to do the blood, uh, blue blood quest line is to become a daywalker. You are immune to non-lethal sunlight. What this means is that when you go back out during the day, wait for it, you are no longer punished by sunlight. You finally have your regeneration. I love it. You eat enough rare and powerful people in Skyrim and you then regenerate like it's a normal everyday character and it's uh especially if you're doing a more challenging playthrough that's right give me back my magica there we go yeah very nice yeah so especially if you're doing a challenging version of blue blood where you actually wait until they're sleeping to feed on them while they're lying in a bed that will take time and effort to figure out their routines and figure out who you can feed on and which ones are best and like you saw, some of these are, some of these, uh, it's the wrong menu. Some of these are locked behind plot barriers, right? You can't just start the game and go feed on Astrid. You can't just start the game and go feed on Mercer Frey, right? So I like that with the Blue Bloods, they picked NPCs that most of them are accessible at the start of the game. So you could do most of Blue Bloods right at the beginning if you knew their routines. But a lot of them are behind quest walls. So you have to keep that in mind when you're plotting who to feed on, but it's definitely worth it because one of my biggest pet peeves, and it's supposed to be a pet peeve, right? Vampires are not supposed to be able to dance in the sunlight like if there's no tomorrow. Uh, so it is an appropriate pet peeve, but it is very freeing to me to be a vampire standing in the sun and regenerate like a normal person because I am one of those crazy psychos that brings out the uh, Deadly Dragons mod goes down to assaults and then says, you know what, I'd rather fight two dragons at a time and let's make it once every three to four days. That'd be fun. And then realize, oh wait, half that time's gonna be during the day and I have uh, no regenerative abilities. Lovely. Ah, that is actually a really beautiful sunrise. That's not a bad place for a, uh... let's see if I can get a good shot of that. Almost, just gotta turn a little bit. It's hard to line up those shots when you're I guess that's good enough. All right. Thank you so much for joining me on my deep dive into the Blue Bloods quest line. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's just a question of tracking down which NPCs you can feed upon, or I guess just feeding on everyone, and you'll just, you know, randomly come across the right Blue Bloods eventually. Uh, but there were a few that we didn't see Mercer Frey, Isron, 
let's see, Savos Aran. Uh, all of those guys are actually, they, they sleep on a regular schedule. Once they're in their guild location, they do sleep on a regular schedule, which means you can anticipate it and feed on them fairly easily. Uh, the Emperor actually is probably the toughest one to feed on because you have to literally get through most of the Dark Brotherhood quest line just to bring him into, this, into the scope. And Eastron, I don't even know if he sleeps in the Dawnguard quest line because I haven't fed on him myself. So... That is an example of how to pull off blue bloods. I didn't show it them all to you because I only needed seven to show you how the buffs work. Let me know uh, in the comments below which of the buffs was your favorite and which blue blood you felt was the toughest one to feed upon or which one you would hate feeding on, I guess, if you were doing a regular playthrough. Anyway, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Take care.